Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Web 101. Today we're going to be talking about the basics of web hack. Uh, so my name is Rodalyn O'Connell. I'm a junior at RPI, and I'm the current treasurer for RPI Sec, uh, where I mainly focus on reverse engineering. My name is JD Hernberg. I am a sophomore at RPI. I am a core member of RPI Sec, and I mainly focus on binary exploitation. My name is Dylan Walsh. I am also a code member at LPISEC, and I mainly focus on web and cryptography. My name is Christina Lino. I'm the treasurer of ACMW and a general member of RPISEC. So we have three general types of meetings. Intrasec is geared toward people who are interested in security but haven't had the opportunity to explore this interest. Um, Intrasec meetings are offered in the fall. So you should definitely stop by next semester if you're ready to learn. Normally on Wednesdays, members meet for hack night. It's usually a very casual hour or two where people get together and explore security talk, topics they're interested in or just work on homework. Most importantly, we meet on Fridays where members of the club will give talks on topics they're experienced in. These will continue to happen this semester, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Outside of the meetings, we compete in Capture the Flags for CTF. Now, Capture the Flags, or we'll, we'll call them CTFs from now on, are a big cornerstone of our club. And this is mainly because we enter in competitions, which we are given Jeopardy style questions in which we have to find the flag instead of computer. Now, the types of questions that we get are range from binary exploitation, reverse engineering, the web, crypto, and even some miscellaneous topics in digital forensics. And in all these questions, we have to hack the program and try to find a flag within the program. And there's classes here at Ensler, which can help you learn the skills in order to do these things, sort of such as model analysis and monetary modern binary exploitation, and we even have people who are in these classes, such as Rylan. Yeah, so that's actually me in the picture on the right back in the spring of 2018 when I was taking MBE. Um, and although we do offer other independent studies, um, our two main courses here, our two main offerings are malware analysis, which as the name would imply, mainly focuses on looking at malicious programs and reverse engineering them to figure out what they do. Um, so that's a really great way to learn a lot about um, reverse engineering, especially if you're interested in um, doing that on Windows or in a in the context of malware. Um, whereas modern binary exploitation kind of flips things around, and it's where you would learn more about the uh, the offensive side of things. So taking a program and actually writing an exploit against it. <clears throat> um, and so using these skills that we learn through these classes and through um, these meetings. Uh, we, we compete in these competitions, these CTFs that JD was talking about before. And so we compete in uh, competitions online as well as physical competitions all across the country. So this picture is taken from DEF CON, which is a, a very, very big competition that happens every year in Las Vegas. Um, however, we also compete in other competitions all around the world. So this picture was actually taken in China in a competition called Real World CTF, which is another very big uh, CTF that happens. Um, so with these competitions, obviously, sometimes there are prizes associated to help motivate us. So in this picture, uh, we're competing in a competition called CyberSeed. Uh, this was many years ago. We won a basketball that you can actually still see in Lally if, if you were able to get in there this semester. Um, but it's displayed in our trophy case there uh, right on that uh, entry floor there. Um, and you can see this basketball was signed by a number of people, including a lot of Comcast executives there. However, the the prizes that we're more interested in usually are these sorts of prizes. You can see that this is a, another prize from that same competition, CyberSeed, where we actually won $10,000 that year. Okay, so now for the main part of the talk, which is how do we actually do these things. In order to talk about how to do web, we have to first define exactly what we mean by web. Thankfully, it's exactly what you'd expect. We're talking about websites. But in this case, instead of talking about how to build them, we want to know how to break them. So 
Web code is split mainly into two sections. You have the client side and you have the server side. The client side are things like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that your browser will show to the user. Server side is the backend part that you as a user will hopefully never see. This can be done in PHP, there are Python libraries, a bunch of different options. So the question is, why does this matter? Well, similarly to how the code is split into two sections, most web vulnerabilities also fall into two main sections. The first one is that any security done on the client side is just wrong. It should never be done there. We'll get into that in a second. Additionally, you have the times where sometimes people put code where it really doesn't belong. In terms of client side security, what people, a lot of people don't realize is that web browsers allow you to view and edit all of the client side code in real time. This is the things like inspect element and the JavaScript console. So here's an example of client side security where in my web browser, I can look and see what's happening. And in this case, I can access an array with a list of just everyone's username and password. However, the more, the more common vulnerability in the real world is that a lot of times developers know what they want to be put into a text box, but sometimes people put other things there. So while Twitter is meant for nice messages to be stuck in there, sometimes people decide to put something more like this. Now, it's not necessarily important to understand and be able to write this code specifically. However, the general idea is not super complicated. This is a text box that is displayed to everyone on Twitter. But instead of sticking text in there, he put HTML code. In this case, he put a JavaScript tag. Within that tag, he just put some JavaScript so that whenever a user looked at this, they would have a pop-up on their screen that said XSS and TweetDeck. The tweet would look like nothing but a heart, but it would retweet itself from their account automatically. And because of that, as you can see, this tweet has 83 and a half thousand retweets. And now that's all well and good, but let's see how to do it. For this, I'm going to walk you through one of the challenges in our in-house CTF called Fair Game. There will be a link to this at the end of the slideshow. You're more than welcome to try it out. We highly encourage that. In this case, we'll be looking at this challenge. I'll let you figure out which one it is on your own. So when it comes to solving a web challenge, there are really the first step that you always want to go for is figure out what is this supposed to do? So obviously you can see it is a staff directory and it says you can only view public staff listings, not the private ones. So we know they're all private ones, probably what we want to get to. And below we can search for a department. So if we do like IT is one of the example ones, you can see it brings up some people. If we just type in something random, it doesn't give us anything. So now at this point, we know what it's supposed to do. Let's see how it does it. So if we look at the page source, this looks like relatively normal HTML code. However, you can immediately see this line 38 over here. For this case, we decided to be nice with this challenge and actually give you a single line of the backend code or part of a line. It's after it's being run. While you wouldn't see this normally in the real world, it makes it a little bit easier for the sake of the challenge because you typically don't have as much time as you would if you were just testing a website, for example. But anyway, we can see this is a line of a language known as SQL. You may or may not be familiar with it. And you can see right here is the input that we gave it. So for the sake of looking at it a little easier, I'm going to just take this line and put it into VS Code. Now, you can see that when we stick it in, our input goes here. However, for the sake of readability, I'm just going to add some spaces to either side. Remember that these spaces are not actually there in the real code. We're just going to edit this. Once again, these spaces are just for visibility. So SQL is a relatively readable language. You can see very similar things such as and should be familiar to most programmers as an and operation. You also have things such as or. So if we look through what this is doing, we have select star, which is just select everything from a list. The list is just called staff. So we know the backend has a list called staff and we're looking through every single item in said list with a given condition. So what this way it means. So the condition is this section. So first of all, 
the public variable has to be set to 1, and this has to be true. Remember, our input goes here. So, for example, we can see that our input gets put inside these single quotes. So if we put our own single quote there, it would close this one and be valid SQL syntax until you got to this one. So we'll worry about that in a little bit. But for example, what if we did something like this? Here you can see that within these parentheses, we have department equals, remember this will be an empty string because the spaces are just for our sake, they're not actually there. And we have, so an empty string, so department equals empty string, that will always be false. Or an empty string equals, remember this will be an empty string without the spaces. This section will always be true. As such, this whole thing will be true. So if we take this little input part and we try to put it in and search with it, we will see that now we have all of the departments, but it looks like we're still only getting the public listings. And if you look at the code, you can see it's because we have where well public equals one. So we have to come up with a little bit of a more complicated solution in order to get rid of this part, or at least ignore it. So what we can do is we know we need to close that uh, quote, that quote, because if we leave the quote open, we won't be typing code. And at this point, we can do something like close the parenthesis. So now we have this is its own thing. So we have this and this. So we have this and this. And from there, we can add our own, for example, or. And now we can just do whatever we want. I'm opening a parenthesis just for the sake of making sure this one gets closed. And you can do the same little single quote equals trick. And once again, we can try and see how this works. When we try and search with this, you'll see now we have everything, including the, pub the private listings. For example, we have a flag. And in order to really see what's going on in the background, we can look at the source again, because as we saw before, it shows us what our code is being read as. And here you can see it's, as once again, there are no spaces there. That was purely for the sake of keeping things organized on our end. But you can see now it's read as select everything from staff, where public is one and department is an empty string, or true because this will always be true. Because this is always true, the entire condition is always true, and therefore we get every single person. So once again, these are on our in-house ETF. There are plenty more challenges on there at fairgame.rpis.ec. There's a link in the slides. We would highly encourage you to try them out if you're interested. And if you want to have any questions or just want to have a conversation with us, you can join our Slack workspace at rpisec.slack.com. We are always online, always willing to talk. And other than that, you guys, I thank you for visiting.